Hey guys, welcome to another Game Explained discussion. Now, as you probably heard, Nintendo just unleashed a new tsunami, and so we're here to clean up the mess and talk about it all. This includes a 2D Nintendo 3DS, a Wii U price cut, and release dates galore. Today, we're joined by Derek Binner and Ryan Green to go over all the announcements and maybe even give our thoughts too. Okay, we definitely give our thoughts. So let's get this party started. Alright guys, so Nintendo announced a ton of news today. Uh, like, I woke up and it was just insane what, what all they announced, especially because what they announced was seemingly insane. Um, and they did all of this without a Nintendo Direct, which is extremely odd, you know, by their by their standard these days. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, real quick, you know, they announced a new version of the Nintendo 3DS, except called the 2DS, uh, which only plays games in 2D. Uh, they announced a Wii U price cut, a Wind Waker bundle with Wii U, and a whole bunch of release dates. Um, so I want to start off though with the Nintendo 2DS. Um, you know, uh, as we saw in the in the announced or in the trailer that, that just came out for the system, it's basically a ta it's basically a tablet uh, of the Nintendo 3DS um, with two screens, which looks so weird, which looks really weird. And uh, yeah, can only play games in 2D, and it's coming out at a reduced price of one twenty nine ninety nine um, on October twelfth. October twelfth is the same day as Pokemon X and Y. Um, so, what are your guys' gut level reactions to to the system? Um, let's start off with you, Derek. What do you think? What, what do you think of this? Uh, the design is it's a it's a good idea. It's to have that low level price, especially in the day that Pokemon comes out. That's a brilliant idea. Uh, the design itself weird it's so it's so <laughs> odd to see a 3ds that doesn't fold <laughs> yeah <laughs> or which, a ds it's yeah what you were saying um is the first uh the first nintendo handheld since uh the game boy micro in 2005 to to do this <laughs> yeah Except i mean i'm look i'm looking at it it's just it's just an odd design but it it, it seems like and i think this is what nintendo's pushing much more for kids yeah. This is this is not meant to be the sleek model that adults are will carry around and enjoy. The button layout has been changed. It's sort of like you're holding it almost in the middle. But if you go off uh, their their trailer, it looks like adults are gonna be playing it too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, that's what they hope. Okay, well now that we got uh, now, we, now that we got Derek's uh, partially optimistic impressions out of the way, Ryan, what do you what's your gut level reaction? <laughs> My my initial reaction to this was it looks like a doorstop, but <laughs> it, it it makes total actually. sense as to why like if you're gonna mark this as like for young gamers, which I'm not convinced don't already have a 3ds, if yeah. not two, at this point, you're you're getting rid of the the hinge, which is a, an obvious like breaking point at least on earlier DSs, right? And uh, yeah, like 3D, like are a lot of games actually taking advantage of the 3D? So like effect. that's I mean that's the weird thing because not really Nintendo has specifically said that uh, that every game um, they are designing to be played in 2D as well like no game will require 3D. With that said, you know 3D has been a huge focal point of the system being in the name, um, and you know most experiences are I would argue are enhanced by the 3D, um, especially you know games that are still made with it in mind even if not made. To be played with it in mind, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, not not you not not made to be. You know, it doesn't have to be played specifically with that in mind. But like, take a you know a link to the past or a, a link to the past, uh, a link between worlds. Um, you know, with a top-down view and how Miyamoto has himself said, uh, with you know, on the original game, it was difficult to discern depth when you're like on a cliff on a cliff as opposed to like you know an area beneath it. Um, whereas now the 3D screen makes that you know readily apparent. Um, or even you know Mario 3D Land. Which you know was technically able to be played with uh, in 2D, played far better in 3D, being able to gauge you know the depth of platforms as well as, as well as it even had um, some areas that were designed specifically with a 3D screen. It even told you, hey, you should probably turn on the 3D screen now. <laughs> uh, but with that said, it looks like moving forward, um, all games basically will not depend on you know 3D, and especially because they have to now with with this device. Yeah, it's 3D 3D has sort of dropped off uh, recently. It's it's not as popular at the movies. Uh, nobody's ever really nobody really uses. It. I know a friend that got a 3DS never uses the 3D on it. I like to use it on occasion. Uh, de just depends on uh, how long I decide to play it or what game I'm playing. But uh, yeah, I can see them easily getting rid of the um, the 3D functionality uh, without any t without too many repercussions, at least with the newer games. The older games, they might run into a few, as you were saying. Yeah. Um, 
but I think I don't think it's going to be a feature that's too missed. Yeah, I, I you know I mean it's well especially if it's you know starting off if especially if it's someone's first handheld or you know first three D you know first. I don't know what they call this. It's not a 3DS. <laughs> it's a 2DS. Especially yeah. if it's you know, someone's first, you know, uh, handheld in the 3DS line. Um, because, yeah, they, they won't know what they're missing, basically. Um, I mean, I think... I was talking with one of my friends before this, and he was defending the system. Um, because apparently a lot of people have been just tearing it apart already. And he was arguing that it is, it's a smart idea. I'm like, yeah, I agree, it is a smart idea. It just looks really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you have this, this, you know, this tablet form factor, which is all the rage these days. Um, but then you have these, yeah, these two itty bitty screens, which, you know, aren't even the same size. And the whole thing doesn't, you know, it doesn't fold in half at all. It's just a very bizarre design. With that said, it looks like it's built like a tank. Uh, it'll probably be ideal for, yeah, for, you know, young children. You're just going to throw it in their bag. And it does look, I think, as one of you mentioned earlier, uh, it does look kind of comfortable, you know. Um, like, you know, it looks like it'll actually be more com Like, my hand actually cramps on the 3DS after a while. And this actually looks like, this actually looks closer to the uh, Wii U's gamepad and form factor. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of space there for you to just spread out your hand and easily play. Well, yeah, because uh, if you look at it, like, the buttons now have all been moved up compared to the original 3DS. You know, I mean, they're now, like, halfway across the entire length of the, you know, between the both, basically between both screens. Whereas on the 3DS, you know, they have to be, you know, by design, on the lower half of the system. Um, and then the whole thing now, like, it starts off, like, as a, you know, as a tapered end. But then, like, it expands to considerable girth, for lack of a better word, um, the farther up you go. So, uh... It's really similar to, like, a, a Sony Xperia tablet that came out a few years ago. Oh! So, uh, yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I was thinking of. Yeah, the, I, I, it just, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, you're right, it totally is. Um, so what do you guys think of the price cut? Because this is, this is also a way of Nintendo cutting costs. Uh, presumably, you know, no 3D screen, there's no moving parts. Um, you know, this is just a, just a flat, you know, a single, probably like, you know, just a couple pieces of plastic they have to put together. Um, yeah, so it's coming out one twenty nine ninety nine. which, uh... Oh, what's it? Do you, anyone remember the current price of the 3DS? Is like 169? Is it 169? 169? Yeah, so yeah, 169. Yeah. So that's a considerable it's price drop. Um... And it's coming out on the same day as Pokemon X and Y. I think that could be huge for sales, potentially. Um, mm -hmm. like that's going to be like a no-brainer for people, I think. Uh, uh, I agree, because, you know, even every time we post a new analysis on Pokemon, there's always people in the comments saying, uh, I might have to get a 3DS for this game. Right. There's a 3DS for you. <laughs> nice and cheap, so you don't. there's not much of a... Uh, cost of entry. It's a little odd that they're not deciding to just do a pack-in like they're doing with uh, Wind Waker right. uh, and the Wii U, but it is it's, I, I would argue, almost cheaper. I mean, it would put you it would put you at about the same cost as a uh, with a normal the 2DS 3DS. and, a th yeah, and, yeah. The, and Pokemon as a normal 3DS, which yeah, I could I could see that working out very well for them. Right. Yeah. So Ryan, is this what is this what is this all it takes for you to go finally pick up a 3DS? Like, are no, you? No. This locked is in not. Now? This is exactly <laughs> what I don't want. <laughs> what I want is a like a price cut on the XL because the XL is the only model that really like seems like a solid device. It doesn't have that lumpiness that the you know the original 3DS had, which is the same thing that the DS Fat had. It just it doesn't appeal to me. I, it makes sense from, like, you know, if you're really going to target younger audiences, sure. Right. It, I just have a hard time believing that, like, the best-selling handheld device out there, the cash cow for Nintendo currently, that the market isn't kind of liquidated. Like, you know, it's, it just... That, that part just kind of strikes me as odd. But I guess there's... Since the 3DS has come out, maybe a few kids who are now of age to actually start playing handheld <sighs> games that it might work better for... But it still seems, I don't, it just, I just, I thought, like, the 3DS seems like, oh, this is the market where Nintendo's getting their money and they're not going to get a whole lot of more people on board with this device. But they might, just because of that, of that younger, that, like, you know, kids who just start in kindergarten, yeah. where you're going to start being introduced well, to gaming, like, oh, well, this is only one thirty, and the parents will, you know. Well, it is odd that they're releasing this the same day as Pokemon, which would presumably, you know, it would increase sales, or, you know, I mean... That, that will increase 3DS sales. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. it is odd that now they're competing with themselves uh, with this new model um, you know, that's going to, that will take away from sales of the existing 3DS. I'm guessing Nintendo's hoping there will be more you know, sales of the 2DS to offset the lost 
sales of the core of the original 3DS. I mean, I guess at this point, I almost wonder if Nintendo even cares. Maybe they're making more profit on this than they are off a typical system. Um, I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they they have to because they're using a specialized screen at that point, and they're moving. You know, again, one of the big moving parts was that hinge was always right. a problem. So you have to have certain cables that are able to be flex in certain ways. Yeah. Um, it it seems like. Nintendo is always a company that's pretty good at not losing money on a system, with the exception of maybe some of their consoles in the past, but they're they're not going to be going at a loss, and this certainly must be a way of just kind of like doubling down on the 3DS system and make it just, you know, more profitable and just in areas that necessarily weren't essential, at least from what they saw in market research. But right, so I guess it makes me wonder, when are we going to get the... Uh the the Wii U except or the the Wii version of the Wii U <laughs> without without the tablet. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, for the most part, this thing is still as versatile as um, the as the 3DS. I mean, it still has most of the functionality. It even has oddly enough that the, the uh, front facing cameras can still take 3D photos. Oh, you back facing cameras. Yeah, the back facing cameras. Thank yeah, you. yeah, that is so. <laughs> that, which is super odd to me. They can take 3D pictures, but you can't see them on device. But you can send them to other people with a 3ds. Yeah, um, it's 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 weird, but it's you know I think overall I think this is a good move on their part because yeah. the po- people who already have DSs will get X and Y. This creates a le- uh, much lower cost of entry for yep. people who want to get a 3ds to play X and Y, and then they also this also steam rolls into the rest of the 3ds lineup for the year yeah no i mean i actually do agree i mean the the it's, they're not taking away systems i mean this system is just another option mm-hmm. um and more options are rarely a bad thing so yeah i actually agree with that as well now that's not the only system getting a price cut as uh as we learned about because the wii u deluxe which completely shocked me i did not think nintendo would do this is getting a 50 dollars price cut dropping down to uh Two hundred ninety nine. Uh, oh yeah, two hundred ninety nine dollars mm-hmm. um, on September twentieth, and uh, and it's even coming with them. They're even making a special bundle version that comes with the Wind Waker HD uh, that has a you know the gamepad has like Zelda decorations on it, and uh, and it's coming with the digital version of Wind Waker HD. So no no disc copy um, for the same exact price. So two ninety nine, you'll get a special Wii U with like Zelda decorations on the gamepad. And, uh, yeah, it comes with a digital version of the Wind Waker HD uh, for the exact same price, just presumably minus uh, Nintendo Land. So that, that's, that's a difference between the two, between the two models. It's, there's a- actually a lot of other interesting things they're pack- packing in with, it, including a digital version of Hyrule Historia, if you haven't picked that up, and a gold Hyrule Crest. I'm not quite sure what that is, but, you know, even more extras beyond the Nintendo Land for this version. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty crazy. Um, I wonder, so will, will the Hyrule Historia be accessible only on the Wii U? Because that will kind of be unfortunate, actually, I think. I would not want to read an entire book on my gamepad. <laughs> I think they would, they would probably go as far as maybe making it available on the 3DS, if they ever got that linking system working, but I don't see it going outside of that. Yeah, I mean, uh, that would be interesting, but also wouldn't be optimal either. <laughs> it'd be nuts, but I, I have to think that it has a, you know, the dull, it's, it'll be a PDF that you can put on Amazon. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm more optimistic than you two, but it just well, seems odd that a they PDF would. will be way too easily shared among people, so. That's true. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's why I don't think that'd be the case, but it would be nice if they somehow, like, offered it as, well, like, yeah, at, at, like, on the Kindle bookstore with a code or something, or I don't know. Yeah, um, I, but I very much doubt that's going to happen. Um, so, what do you guys think about about this? You know, this price cut and uh, and new bundle. Let's start with you, Ryan, on this one because you don't own a Wii U either. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Um, I think they're going in the right direction in terms of bundling that game in. I mean, I know there's a lot of people who who are older Nintendo fans who necessarily don't have even a Wii at this point, but thinking, oh, like I really like the GameCube game. You know, I I liked Wind Waker, and you know, I do too personally. Um, Again, it's not, for me, it's not the system I want, but I think it's a really smart sell, and something is probably more attractive than saying Nintendo Land, which is, you know, by all accounts, is a fairly good, you know, like, minigame collection, but a game like this, with this, you know, with this notoriety around it, really seems like the, the right pick. Yeah. And and, and really, the, the price drop really just kind of helps seal that. So are you going to pick it up? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh... But I know, I, I know. I think it has convinced you, Derek, though, hasn't it? 
Yeah, well, the price drop itself convinced me, and I was under the strange thought that uh, the Wind Waker HD would still going to be 350. Uh, the bu- that bundle would still be 350, while the other one would be 300. So I was a little like when I saw it was the same price. I'm like, well, heck, which one do I get? Because I'm kind of weird where I like to have physical copies of my games. I'm not right. a huge fan of digital collections, and I already have the Hyrule Historia, but. I think I'm more interested in Wind Waker than Nintendo Land. Plus, uh, call me uh, superficial, but I really like the design of the, the gamepad that has all the Zelda markings all around it. You're superficial. Uh, I am. <laughs> 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 I like the looks of things, which is why I want to ha- add a physical copy of Wind Waker to my collection. So, basically, it comes down to selection for me. But yes, probably come September 20th, I'm going to be picking up a Wii U. All right. Wow. So, uh, it, and. But you're not getting, but you're not getting the Wind Waker one, right? You're getting the standard. I don't know. I have, I've yet, to, I have not made up my mind. You have five <laughs> seconds to decide, Derek. Which one are you going with? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> you think about it; it's probably already sold out at, at that point. <laughs> it might. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I, I honestly can't tell. I mean, if they make no mention of the deluxe set, including. Nintendo Land. So, if it includes Nintendo Land, yes, I'll get it. If it doesn't, I'll get the uh, the Wind Waker version. Well, I'm pretty sure the Deluxe is still will. I mean, they just mentioned that it's getting a price cut, so I'm pretty confident it's still going to come with Nintendo Land. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be the exact same thing, which now, it raises, which basically, now, uh, before we started recording, um, we were checking in on the basic unit, and it sounds like they're basically done making those. So, it sounds like they're phasing out the basic unit, and mm-hmm. only going to have this one this one uh, skew or uh, yeah SKU which or yeah SKU, um, SKU. <laughs> which which makes sense because apparently not many people are buying the basic I don't know anyone with the basic I, except for myself I, actually because I bought a uh, the Europe or the Japanese one I have is basic because I just wanted a white one but well it makes sense that they would get rid of it. I like as you said nobody was really buying it and I, the thing I'm curious about is there, if they give, give that a $50 price drop just to get rid of all those or that's a good there's one. No, I mean, there's there, anything left there's no announcement about it, but I, I haven't honestly seen a white version around in a while. I haven't they, actively looked. What but. they would do is they, they probably announce an official price cut. They probably just leave it up to the retailer, I'm guessing, and they mm. just discount them just to get rid of them. <laughs> so yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so I, I I think the price cut is cool. I did not see this coming. I thought they would. Nintendo's always said it's been a software problem, which it largely is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I thought they would just ride on their software sales, but I'm guessing they just want to. They are basically doing what the 3DS did. They lower the price. They want kickstart, you know, jumpstart sales, and have a slew of games to support that, you know, newfound momentum. Yeah, oh, and they Nintendo and, Kickstarter, <laughs> <laughs> and they need that momentum because it makes more sense to have them at a, uh, have the Wii U at a hundred dollars when the PS4 is coming out in November. Yep. At four hundred dollars. Oh, and and, and, not, and then the Xbox at what five hundred. 500, yeah. Yes, it's a cute little a, cascade of pricing there. Yeah, so that, yeah, exactly. So that's a 200, that's a potential $200 savings, um, uh, you know, across, you know, compared to the Xbox One, which is, which is considerable. That is, yeah. I mean, you can grab that and a 2DS and still come out ahead. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of, yeah. like, pricing, though, if you think about it, like, during the holidays, it might be pretty hard to get a PS4 or an Xbox One. Right. So, it could be, like, a, a good alternative for someone who may not get the, you know, maybe they wanted the other system, but they didn't have the Wii U. This could be a good opportunity for them to actually, you know, cash in on that. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, they could be going for the whole, uh, you know, the whole, like, grab a PS, or grab an Xbox and Wii thing, you know, instead of a PS3. And then we get robbed in the parking lot, and they have to go back in and get a Wii U. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and especially because launches always have limited systems, and they already oh, yeah. said both systems are already pre-ordered completely. Like, there's no more left. And so. we don't know what kind of, like, shipment, tri- like, they're going to be getting from, like, you know, overseas. Like, how quickly yeah. that's going to turn around, so. Right. So, so clearly, the price drop is, you know, just, you know, part one of Nintendo's plan to increase sales. That's happening September 20th. Um, but speaking of release dates, they announced every other release date, basically, for the end of the year. And it's insane. Um, yeah. So, you know, we have the Wind Waker HD on September 20th. We Which re- is the, only the download version. October 4th is still the packaged version's release date. That's correct. That is true. And both of them are going to be at $50. So, by the way, the Nintendo reps have told me it was going to be $60. we are mistaken. <laughs> um, it's fifty, which is still you know basically full price, but <laughs> it, is a, it is a slight discount. Um, then we have We Party You coming out on October twenty fifth for fifty dollars. We have Mario three D World on November twenty second um, for sixty dollars. On that same day, we have 
The Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds um, for, for $40. And we also have Mario Party Island Tour for uh, $40. $40 as well. So I'm going to stop real quick before we go through the rest of the release dates. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> That's ins they're releasing three games at once. Um, and three first party games. Yeah, three first party games. And to be fair, I am talking specifically from a selfish, my own perspective. I don't know how we're going to cover this. <laughs> this it, it's 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 going to be nasty for yeah. the two of us. <laughs> but I mean, that is a lot of games at once, all catering to similar demographics, I imagine. Um, but this isn't the first time Nintendo has done something like this. I can't remember specific situations, but they have released like you know one or two big games, you know, if not on the same day, like within a week of each other. Um, and I wonder, I mean, I guess Nintendo's got some logic to it. I mean, I, they are, they are, this is on different systems. So one, you know, one is Wii U, one, well, two of them are 3DS. Um, yes. Now, Ryan, I don't know off the top of my head, but what is, what's the release date of the PS4 again? Uh, it's November 15th. November 15th. So I thought this was going to be sort of like a uh, competition type thing with PS4, but not quite. Mm. Yeah, it'll be a week but, later, yeah. Uh... The thing that strikes me the oddest, I mean, yeah, we got three big games releasing all on the same day. Which I should mention is, um, you know, Black, I believe that's Black Friday. Oh, wait, actually, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm mistaken. That's uh, the week before Black Friday, but it's oh, okay. right around there, so. You can see why they want to get those three games out before Black Friday, though, because Christmas shopping. Right, no, whatnot. exactly. Uh, it just makes it rough for us. Uh, but no, the odd thing I've noticed out of the three of these, they have said nothing about Mario Party Island Tour since they first revealed it at the uh, on that one Nintendo Direct. That's I think right. that was back in spring. And all of a sudden we have a release date for it. We know nothing about this game. Yeah, we... I feel like this is the first time I'm hearing about it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Maybe it's in the title? Yeah, not sure. Yeah, we only got a short trailer of it, like, what, six months ago? Uh, Something like that. Yeah, and we and the, even that didn't show that much of that much of it. It just looked like a traditional Mario Party experience, which, granted, is different from Nine. But. Right, and it wasn't at E3. Um, it hasn't been playable at all. Uh, did they? Did they even have a title for it when they first showed it? Um, no, that's a good one. I know they didn't. I don't think so. Yeah, Island yeah. Tour is is a new name. Um, yeah. So I'm curious to see what that game is going to be all about. Are they going to like Long Island, Rhode Island, all those places like that? Or? That'd, that'd be a nice change, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe maybe you'll get to see it at PAX. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's a good one. I wonder... Well, Nintendo already announced their their lineup, so unless it's a surprise, I don't think it's going to be there. It's not yeah. really going to be that many back rooms, because it's PAX, it's not necessarily... Yeah. It's super focused, so... Well, I mean, mm. Nintendo has thrown off... Like, they did show off Metroid Prime there on the DS for the first time at PAX, way back. This is a long time ago now. They showed that off in my college. Oh really? Wow! With MTV being there. Oh man, that's that's. And they gave me a copy. It's really nice of them. I actually bought a DS because of that. Oh nice! nice. Wow, yeah. convinced you. Mm. How Ryan has changed. <laughs> <laughs> Give oh. me free games. I will buy your system. Yeah. All right. So I guess uh, uh, moving on um, for the rest of the year. Then there's also uh, Mario and Sonic uh, at the Olympic Games. Uh, they, oh, they, they didn't give an exact release date for this yet. That's still this holiday season. Yeah. Um, uh. D Donkey Kong comes out December six at uh, at fifty dollars actually, which is weird. I I don't understand that. Like that's a that's a full game. Like if it's the same length as Donkey Kong Country Returns on the Wii, that's going to be a very a very decently length game for a platformer, especially. Um, so either it's not, or they're just selling it at a cheaper price for some random reason, which is probably hey, the case. Hey, I'm all for it. Maybe they just don't have the faith in it though. Like it's a, it's a weird thing to stagger. Like if you have like, say like for PlayStation, you'd have like oh Infamous Two would would sell at sixty dollars starting off, and then you'd sell something like the God of War collection at forty. Like that makes sense. Whatever you're just doing some sort of quick port on it, but you're saying two games that should be comparable, right? That that aren't that are like what ten dollars difference on that? Or yeah, ten dollars difference. Yeah, 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 yeah $10. So like, and specifically we're talking about Mario 3D World and Donkey Kong. Yeah. Yeah, it's the whole thing is weird. Because we have Mario 3D World. I'm guessing will be around the same length. They both have co-op. Um, I I don't understand it. Now you did. Yeah, it is interesting that Mario comes out first at the higher price point, followed by Donkey Kong like two weeks later, um, at the lower price point. So maybe that's what they're going for. They're like, okay, we already we already hit you for the full amount. Now if you just invest a little bit more, which is still close to the full amount, you get a second yeah. game. Plus, um, Donkey Kong is missing that uh, critical Black Friday. That's true. Yeah, that is true. It is 
The whole thing is weird, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> like two two big platformers, although one is 2D, which is you know a pretty big difference, but coming out just weeks within weeks of each other. Um, yeah, so that's that's bizarre. Yeah, then there's We Fit You, which is still coming. Um, I don't think that's gonna do anything, honestly. Like I think they'll get. I- yeah, I think the time has passed on yeah, the Wii Fit. Yeah, it, it'll get some modest sales. The market is too saturated now. Not enough people own a Wii U to make it, you know, to make it explode like the first one did. Do you stand on the tablet or something like? That- <laughs> <laughs> I, so I guess there's going to be a a, a, a a balance board bundle as well because it still uses a balance board as well as a tablet. The whole thing just looks like a complete mess. Like, who wants to hold a tablet while you're working out? Mm. Yeah, and then some of the games like specifically show that. Like, I don't know, this is gonna be a mess. I feel like <laughs> that, that ship has sailed. Um, yeah, the Mar- then, yeah, Mario Sonic, as I mentioned, which will probably do okay. But with so many games that you know coming out, it may actually get lost in the shuffle, especially you know at E3 with it not looking particularly exciting. Um, Maybe not. Th- those games do remarkably well, actually. They do. I, it's true. They they definitely do. But I just feel like there's so much competition this year. Like, in past years, I feel like there wasn't this much competition. But now you have, like, two two huge games coming out on Wii U, plus, you know, a whole 3D, you know, plus, you know, Zelda on 3DS. Um, yeah, I don't know. He'll be curious to see how it does. But are, are you looking forward to it, Derek, at all, or...? I haven't picked up a Mario and Sonic game since the original, so, no. <laughs> well, there you go, and you're like the biggest Sonic fan I know of, so... Uh, they're fun for what they are, but I just I don't have friends over enough to actually do that, and none of right. them are really interested in it, so it's just not worth picking up for me. Yeah. That's pretty much all there is to it. I mean, I would pick it up if I had people to, consistent people to play with, but that's just not the case. Right. Um, but no, it's it's looking like a really good fall, especially for the Wii U. I mean, starting next week, we get Rayman Legends, finally. <laughs> yep. Uh, we get, uh, you know, Sonic Lost World, October 22nd, and then all the rest of the Nintendo pl- offerings, plus a couple of the other uh, third-party games that come out, like Assassin's Creed, Watch Dogs, right. Call of Duty. <laughs> so yeah, how are you feeling about the overall lineup? Like, are you excited for it, uh, both you and Ryan? Uh, I guess I'll take this one first since I'm actually buying the system. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I always knew I was going to be getting a, uh, a Wii U this holiday season just to help with coverage on the site. But it's nice that they, that they lowered the price, had a, have a very attractive bundle with it, and the lineup's looking good. I mean, I I, I want to get I want to get Rayman Legends. I want to get, of course, Wind Waker, uh, 3D World, Donkey Kong. Um, yeah, all those are really great titles. I mean, I'm I want to pick them up. Uh, and even 3DS is looking pretty good between Zelda and maybe Mario Party, I'm not and, sure. And the 2DS. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. I will not be picking up a 2DS. Yeah. Uh, how are you, Ryan? What are your thoughts on, on the lineups for both for both systems? Uh, I think it's looking really strong, just but even by comparison to what you know the new systems are going to be launching with. Uh, attractive games, just personally just never really the game lineup for me. I'm looking for something that is more unique to the Nintendo platform, but not necessarily from Nintendo. I always like those third-party exclusives or something else like that. That would be really nice to see, which may start coming now that Nintendo's been really putting a lot more effort into bringing their own first-party software up there. But, yeah, it's it's looking a lot brighter than it was, you know, a few months ago. Especially with this price drop and this new bundle, it's, it's you know, it's looking good. So I'm, I'm very curious to see, like, if this is going to be what really turns around the Wii U as a platform. Well, the 3DS is fine, though. It's interesting because, I mean, really, the games that we just learned the release dates of, like, it, it, nothing, nothing's changed from what we've known before, um, except that there's now a price cut to go with it all. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, third-party support still seems to be lacking. There's, there are some big games coming, but they're also coming to, you know, almost every other console as well, so it's right. like, whatever. Like, how many SKUs of Watch Dogs are there? Yeah, so, but <laughs> with, that, with that said, we did know... That you know, Nintendo itself had a strong lineup. Uh, you know, at the end of this year, the question is: Well, one, will it work? I think about the price drop. It will definitely, you know, help a lot. But will they be able to maintain that momentum through next year? Like, yeah, that's that's the main thing. Um, well, they have Mario Kart coming out early next year. Correct? Yeah, Mario Kart and and presumably uh, Smash Brother or no? Wait, yeah, Smash Brother next year as well. Yeah. 
So Hope, yeah, maybe definitely not early next year. Probably that that'll be their their uh, winter release for next year. That would make sense. Guess. Yeah. So, but you know, Mario Kart's not gonna be enough to sustain that for the first you know, first part of the I year. I mean, these are these are a lot of Nintendo faithful games we're talking about. There's not a lot of like things that are dramatically different from what you'd usually get out of a Nintendo system. So, there's something else like that that may actually pick up the rest of the people who've been holding out on a Wii U. Uh, that might change things around. Yeah. But, and we almost had that with uh, Rayman Legends before they decided to push it back. I mean, that's why I'm refusing to buy Rayman Legends on any other system except for the Wii U. Just because I want to show solidarity with that, because it looked like a brilliant game exclusive to Wii U players. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, well, it still looks a brilliant, like a brilliant game on all systems, although the Wii U one does have that uh, those touchscreen support levels, which look... So does the Vita. Oh, that's right. Nice. Yeah. Oh, man. Wii U own. <laughs> All right, well, I think that about wraps it up for um, our discussion of all the Nintendo news, which just came like uh, like a semi-truck out of nowhere. <laughs> um, well, thanks, guys, for uh, for joining us, and thanks, everyone, for uh, watching our discussion. Uh, make sure to keep an eye on GamingSplain.com for more on everything Wii U and 3DS and 2DS now. <laughs> um, and keep and make sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter, at GamingSplain, if you don't already. There are links in the description below. You can find all kinds of... Uh, random musings there. Alright, and uh, yeah, thanks again for watching, and bye.